Hi everyone, this is Eric. If you have a Uconnect theater set up in your vehicle with screens in the back for your kids, I'm going to show you how you can play videos on those screens from a USB stick and control everything right from the driver's seat. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can format your videos properly so they'll play, some USB stick do's and don'ts, how to play the same video on both screens, how to play a different video on each, and lastly, I'm going to tell you my top three reasons why this is the absolute best video setup, especially if you have young children. Coming right up. First, let's make sure your videos are going to play. You need to make sure that your videos are no more than 720p and that they're in MP4 format. Don't worry that it's not 1080p or 4K. You're not going to be watching this on a 50-inch LCD. In the little screens on your car, nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. So let's jump onto a computer and check out a video file. Okay, so on a Mac, what you're going to want to do is find your video file and right-click it and then choose Get Info. And what you want to be looking for here is the kind. That should be MPEG-4 Movie. And underneath More Info, you want to look at the dimensions. And this one is 1920 by 808. Uh, what you want is no more than 1280 by 720. So this video is too large. Okay, so on a Windows PC, you're going to locate your video and right-click the file. And then you're going to select Properties. In Properties, you want to check the type of file. And that should be MP4 Video File. And then you want to go to the Details tab. And you want to make sure that the frame width and the frame height are no more than 1280 by 720. So you can see here this one's 1920 by 1080, which is too big. Okay, if you need to convert your video either because the format or the size is incorrect, I suggest you use a piece of software called Handbrake. It's free on the internet for both Windows and Mac. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to use it now. So on my Mac, I'm going to go to my launch pad and I'm going to find Handbrake here. It's the cocktail with the pineapple. And when I open that up, it wants to find my video file. You can search through your file system and find it, but even easier is if you know where it is, just drag your file right onto the handbrake window and it's going to load up and you're going to see that the format is MP4 file, which is what we want. Uh, and I'm going to choose a new preset on the Mac uh, and just go down to general. It's on fast 1080p 30. I'm going to change it to fast 720p 30. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and make sure that my dimensions are set to 1280 by 720, which is what we want. On the PC, it works more or less the same. I'm going to go ahead and launch Handbrake here. Uh, and again, I have my video. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it right into the window. It's going to load it up. And again, I have my presets here. It's already set to MP4 format. I'm going to use my preset drop down, go to general, and go to fast 720p 30. And just to double check, I'm going to go to my dimensions tab and I'm going to make sure that the resolution is limited to 720p HD. So now that you have your settings the way that you want them, you just hit the start and code button. And then it's going to go, go ahead and encode your video and save it. If you want to know where that video is going to end up, uh, right down here at the bottom, there is a save as field and it'll tell you that it's in my users, Eric Underwood videos folder. So I can just go grab that from that location. Same thing here on the Mac. At the bottom, there is a save as. It gives you the file name and the location, Eric Underwood Movies. Just a reminder that if you're getting value from this video, please drop me a like. And if you are new to this channel and you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. You can double check the format of your drive on a Mac by finding it in the sidebar on the left hand side of a finder window. Right click it, choose Get Info. And what you're going to want to look at is the format right here and make sure that it's MS-DOS FAT32. Similarly, on a PC, you're going to find your drive on the left-hand side of your File Explorer window, and you're going to right-click and choose Properties. From here, you're going to want to make sure that the file system is FAT32. Now that you have your videos formatted properly and loaded onto your USB stick, let's go to the car and plug that thing in. Okay, here I am inside my vehicle. It's a Chrysler Pacifica Plug-in Hybrid 2020. Below the main controls on my dashboard, I have a few uh, inputs here, including two USB ports. There's this USB port here, which just has a regular USB symbol, and then I have another USB port down here, which has a USB symbol with rear. Now, on my vehicle, this USB port is for CarPlay, so I can plug my phone in here and get it onto uh, CarPlay on the screen, but that's not what I want in this case. I want to plug in my USB stick for the Uconnect theater, and of course, it's right next to the Blu-ray player in my car. The Blu-ray Blu player is one of the inputs for the Uconnect theater, the USB stick is another. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my USB stick right into that USB port. Okay, now you might want to give some thought to what kind of USB stick you choose for this setup. This is a long, kind of more typical USB stick, and it sticks out of the port like that, and it can be easily snapped off inside, which makes me really uncomfortable. So 
I went ahead and picked up a little low profile USB stick from SanDisk and I'm sure there's other makers as well uh, but you can pick one of these up online I'll go ahead and link it in the description below it has a lanyard attached to it so that you can easily pull it out of the port so just make sure that guy is facing the right direction and go ahead and insert it in just like that now you have nothing here to break off now that you have your USB stick inserted we need to open up the Uconnect theater from the media screen where you listen to the radio you have a button there for Uconnect you can also go to your app screen and on the second page there's the Uconnect theater icon which I've tapped and held and dragged down to my dock so that I always have it there I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the Uconnect theater what you're seeing here is a representation of the two screens on the left hand side you have the screen that's behind the driver side and on the right hand side you have uh, the screen that's behind the passenger side seat. Now each one of them has a Blu-ray disc icon right now because the Blu-ray disc player is selected as the input. There's a select input 1 and a select input 2, so for each screen you can select an input. I'm going to go ahead and tap select input 1 and choose my USB stick. So now I'm inside my USB stick. It's looking for music. I'm on the music tab, but I can tap on movies, and then I have a list of all the movies that it's found on my USB stick. You can scroll the list, or you can search the list. So if I want to find Moana, I can type part of the word and say OK, and it'll find that result for me. I'm going to go ahead and clear the results. So now I'm going to go ahead and play Frozen on this screen. It says that the device is connected, and in a moment it's going to start playing. You can see the time code going now. While the vehicle is stopped or going less than three miles per hour, you can actually view what's going on on either one of the screens from the front screen. So I'm going to hit view here so that I can see what's playing on the screen behind the driver's side seat. I'm going to tap this button to go back to my, my interface. So if I want to listen through the car audio, uh, the, the content that's on the screen behind me, I can tap listen in while I'm inside this screen and I'm going to pump my volume up and you can hear that Frozen is playing. I'm going to stop listening in on that one and I'm going to go back to my my two screens. So now I have content playing on the screen that's behind the driver's side seat. If I want that same content to play on the second screen, I can select input and go ahead and choose to, to view screen one as an input. And now I can have both my kids watching the same movie on the screens together at the same time and they're probably not going to be using headphones if they're really little kids uh, they're probably going to play it through the car audio so I can go into either one of these and just listen in on that audio and crank my volume up and again I can hear the movie through the car speakers so now let's say that the kids want to watch two different things instead of selecting screen one as an input for the second screen I can just simply choose select input again and choose my USB stick I'm going to go back to my Movies tab, and then I'm going to find a different movie to watch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and search for Moana again. That's a fun one. And I'm going to go ahead and tap. So now on the second screen, on the right-hand side, you can see that it's now starting to play a different movie. I'm going to view that, and you can see that a movie is starting up. And I can choose to play the audio from that one through the car audio. I'm going to turn down my volume and stop listening in. So there you have it. We've played the same content on both screens and we've played different content on each screen all coming off of the USB stick all controlled from the driver's seat. Now that you've seen what you can do with the Uconnect Theater and a USB stick, please consider clicking the like button if you learned something new, and consider subscribing to the channel. Now here are the reasons I think this is the best possible setup for the Uconnect Theater, especially with young kids. One, you are in complete control from the driver's seat. My kids are young enough at this point that they can't even reach the controls, so it's really important that my wife and I are able to control everything from the front seat without reaching into the second row. Two, there's far less chance of anything getting broken. There are other ways to use this system that are pretty appealing as well, and I'm thinking of covering those in future videos. Leave a comment down below if you'd be interested in seeing that but they pretty much all involve plugging something into the back seat. And with kids, if you plug things in the back seat, you're just gonna increase the chances that something's going to get broken and everyone's good time is gonna be ruined.
Third and lastly, there's no internet connection required. If you're using internet connected devices to play your media, you're bound to run into a pocket of poor connectivity at the worst possible time. With this setup, you can be in the middle of the boonies on your road trip and your videos are gonna keep on playing. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. I certainly learned a few things uh, along the way and I hope to make some more videos around this topic. I hope to see you in the next one and have a great day.